Hey guys, this is Rogues from 87 and today we will be taking a look at a custom stippling tool that I produce and use for my Glocks. And as of this moment, I'm producing two versions of my tool. Uh, one of them is the small waffle tool, and the other one is the large waffle tool. And these two tools attach onto certain specific soldering irons, which I will show you later on. But for now, uh, here are a couple of examples of what you can do with these tools. So this one right here is my RWA Agency Arms Slide Kit on an agency style frame that I made for myself. And the stippling that you see here is done with the small waffle tool. I made it so that it will actually mimic the framework uh, done by Salient or done by Agency Arms. Um, if you choose to do the Salient version, uh, you have to stipple it at a more of a diagonal pattern uh, rather than follow the direction of the grip. Now, following the direction of the grip appears to be what Agency Arms does, sort of. I think they go from top to bottom, maybe. Um, that's my best guess of what roughly what they do. Um, that's the reason why the stippling here looks f very similar to what they do. Uh, you also notice that using my small tool, the pattern formation is very clean and very consistent compared to someone else's stippling tool. And I'll explain why there's such a big difference in the pattern later on in the video. So yeah, so that's the kind of effect you should expect. Now, on the other hand, on my large uh, stippling tool, uh, this is the kind of effect that you should be expecting. It's a much uh, darker color to it. Uh, this is done on a high kappa on a UAC grip, uh, sculptor's grip, I believe that's what it's called. And you can clearly see that this stippling is much deeper. It is significantly deeper. It's also much more aggressive to the touch. And the reason why that is is because the large waffle tool has a much more taller structure, so it actually penetrates deeper into the plastic. Um, this kind of style of stippling, um, I made it so that it's trying to mimic the Zeftec style of stippling, which has a very aggressive uh, and large square pattern on the stippling, although this is technically not correct, because whenever Zeftec stipples their Glock frames, they actually leave the stamp mark and actually move right onto the next. Uh, in this case, I actually did some cleanup work, which is the reason why you don't see the shape of the stamp on the plastic. Um, I'll explain what I mean by that later on. Hey guys, this is Rogue Sims 7 and today we'll be taking a look at a custom stippling tool that I produce and use for my Glocks. And as of this moment, I'm releasing two versions of my tool. One of them is the small waffle pattern, and the other one is the large waffle pattern. And these two tools attach onto a certain specific soldering iron, which I will show you later on. But for now, uh, let's go over a couple of examples of what you can do with these tools. So this one right here is the RWA Agency Arms Slide Kit on an agency style frame that I made for myself. And the stippling that you see here is done using this small tool. I made it so that it will mimic the framework done by Salient or done by Agency Arms. But of course, it's not exactly the same as theirs. Um, if you choose to do it the salient way, uh, salient sort of goes at a diagonal direction, while the agency arm sort of follows the grip a little bit, which is the reason why I stippled it like that. If you notice, the pattern formation is very, very clean and very, very um, consistent throughout the whole entire frame. If you actually work on it a little bit more, you can even make it look better than mine. Uh, mine doesn't look that good, but I think it looks okay. I think it looks the part. And the next up is the uh, high kappa that I stippled using the large tool. Uh, this is stippled on a UAC grip, uh, sculptor's grip, I believe that's what it's called. So uh, this large waffle pattern tool is a little bit taller and a little bit bigger. And what this does is that it makes the stippling very aggressive and much deeper. So whenever you put your hand on this grip, it's actually very, very aggressive to the touch. Um, if you're stippling for practical reasons, meaning if you're actually stippling this because you need this, you need your gun to stay um, very, very grippy on your hands, maybe the Zevtech, one, Zevtech style stippling head or the large tool that I make is more appropriate for you. Um, the pattern is, ex is a little bit too aggressive for my taste though. So, uh, why make this tool? Um, so, this tool I primarily made just to give people the option or to give crafters the ability to produce stippling at the professional level, I suppose. So, meaning the stippling actually looks consistent and clean. 
while having some features that actually make the tool much more user-friendly uh, compared to the other stippling stamps that you see out there in the market. So first off, um, this tool is made of steel. The reason why I decided to go this route is because uh, copper and aluminum will actually wear itself out over time due to you using it and cleaning it. Um, if you don't know what I mean, uh, whenever you stipple a Glock frame or anything plastic, there are two to three common problems that you guys may know, even without me telling you. So the first problem is obviously the plastic builds up on the structure. Uh, whenever you have plastic building up on this, your pattern will become more inconsistent and it doesn't transfer the heat from the soldering iron very well. So um, you may have noticed that when you do your own stippling on a Glock frame, you may have noticed that that problem is quite annoying. Um, the second problem is that whenever you decide to clean the tool, it's very difficult, difficult to clean. It's because um, if you heat it up or use solvent, you have to dig the plastic out of this. Normally by using a hobby knife or by using something like this or a cutter. And do this. To just take the plastic out like so. And then go like this and spin the tool do another side, so on and so forth. The problem with this technique is that what happens is that you can actually damage the tip of the pyramid structures. And when you do that, what you basically do is that you round off these structures and basically it won't penetrate into the plastic as deep. It also won't produce the same kind of consistent pattern that you would normally expect. So that's the reason uh, why my tool may be a little bit better in that situation. And as for the third problem is that the structure is actually too short. Um, if it's too short, what will happen is that it will make it will make the cleaning process even more difficult because it's a very very short structure. Um, it will also basically mean that your stippling pattern won't penetrate into the plastic as deep. So in my case, I actually purposely made these tools extra tall in the pyramid structures so that it will penetrate deeper into the plastic and make a much more consistent pattern compared to other tools in the market. Um, if you actually look very carefully. You can clearly see how tall they stick out of the of the tool. It's really, really tall. Um, the Zeftec one is about 1.3, 1.2 millimeters tall, while the Agency Arms um, and uh, Salient Style or the Small Waffle tool is about one millimeter tall. Um, I pr I had to do it that way, otherwise the pattern won't be as consistent. So this is as best as I can do. Now. Uh, so basically with all those with my tool, I basically removed all those problems. So like I said, it's made of steel, very durable. Uh, B, the pyramid structures are much taller, so stippling head is way more consistent. Uh, produces a much better pattern. And C, the cleaning process is much easier. So this basically solves all these problems in one go um, using these tools that I made. And, but there is sort of a downside. Because I made these out of steel, it can rust. So you have to keep these in oil at all times. If you don't keep them in oil, can you see this black color one right here? Um, when I first, I wasn't really, th I wasn't using my brain, and I actually left it out, and it turned black color, and it was rusting a little bit. Uh, you can clean it off with a little bit of WD-40. Um, it's not a big deal. In my experimentation, it takes about three days in Hong Kong's humidity in order for it to rust. So I, so you, you sort of have a, have quite a long time, even if you accidentally leave it out it should take a couple of days before it starts rusting or starts building rust, depending on the humidity, depending on how much water is in your air. So um, that's how that works. Um, just I just strongly advise you to just buy a jar of oil like this. Just buy a jar or a container, keep a little bit of oil, and then put it in. Very simple. And as to how these tools attach, notice that there's no threads whatsoever. The reason why that is is because I designed it so that you can just slip it into a these kinds of stippling tools. So right here, you basically unscrew the screw. Take the tool, slip it in, then tighten your screw down. And that right there, that's how your tool stays secure. So uh, the reason why I decided to do this instead of using threads on the on the tool is because if you use threads, I discovered that the steel threads on this, it was stripping the threads on my soldering iron. I used to have another soldering iron that uses threads. It stripped it. Um, and the reason why I kept swapping it in and out is because when I made this out of steel, because it would rust, right? So I had to put it in the oil, take it off, put it back on. I just stripped the threads. So I decided 
I'm just gonna use this system. It's much more easier to deal with. Um, you will never ever have to replace this unless you somehow strip the screw on your own soldering iron. Uh, but you can buy screws anywhere. Like if you're in Hong Kong, you can buy screws in a, in a mgumpo or something like that. And just to help the people in Hong Kong, if you live in Hong Kong, like me, you can get the soldering iron in any mgumpo. Any mgumpo do I What I call say sub sub zero look sub zero test sub one. Only my test sub one. Those are English do hey. Ah, those are English. Are Japan ban? Yeah, Japan ban. Those are lacquer. Yeah, will buy. Ah, will buy a lot. Ah, buy. The guy learn pool do do yao. Ah, anyway, that was Kanto. My Kanto is really really bad. Okay, don't judge me. Anyways, um, but if you live in the U.S. and all that stuff, um, I did find a couple people who had tools like this. So you're just going to have to figure out which stippling tool works for you. Um, I don't. I'm not too familiar with all my brands in the U.S. Um, you can always just make your own threads if you really really want to, um, because most really threaders have a very uh, hardened steel that can actually work through this, and I tested that already. Um, you can actually take a re-threader and thread this for whatever soldering iron you like to use um, of a certain specific diameter. Though. I forgot the exact diameter of this, but I'll leave it somewhere on the screen for you guys. So, uh, let me just talk about the specific styles now, and what you have to do before you even consider stippling anything. So first off, is your frame selection. Um, this is specifically for the Glock people um, that like to follow me on my channel for my Glock stuff. So if you decide to stipple this on an army frame, on a Glock frame, be very wary that the plastic on this melts funny. Um, it will actually stay on your stippling iron and actually stick to it. I strongly advise you not to stipple the Murray frames just because the pattern that it produces is not as good looking as the garter frames or as the Stark Arms frames. Um, Army is also has the exact same problem because Army uses a relatively weak plastic. But that being said, you can also use that if you wish. Um, you can stipple Murray if you wish. I just advise you not to do it. The second thing that you have to do is frame preparation. So what I mean by that is that before you even stipple, before you even stipple your frame, you have to do frame preparation, which is this. You have to sand down all the edges and all the areas that could create an inconsistent pattern. If you do not do this, you will not produce a consistent pattern. This is an absolute must. If you want to do something like this, you have to remove all the edges completely. So that's something I strongly advise you to do. And the last thing is that whenever you use this tool, um, you can experiment on something first. Um, if you poke this into the plastic, I guarantee you it will make a relatively deep stippling. Um, if you decide to do stuff like this and actually remove all the grooves at the back, whenever you stipple this area, or this area, or if you actually cut the trigger guard, uh, the, the trigger guard, poke the plastic gently on these areas. Now the reason why that is is because on a garter frame at the back over here, if you remove all the plastic over here that has the texture, and you start stippling it, you may notice that you can come very, very close to penetrating this plastic and actually going right through it. So when you stipple these areas, go gently, just dab it very gently and leave and leave the frame. That should create your pattern immediately. Um, it's very easy to do. Um, I did this in about 20 minutes. So it shouldn't be too difficult for you guys. And um, so yeah, and now I want to talk a little bit more about the kind of effects that you that you expect to get. So uh, this one is done by another tool. This one is done by my tool. I showed you guys this earlier. The difference is astronomical, as you can see. The pattern is much more distinctive on mine. Uh, this just primarily has to do with the tool uh, being very difficult to clean, while my tool stays clean most of the time. That's the reason why the pattern is so much is so different. So that's the kind of effect you should expect. Um, and I'll actually show you guys a couple more projects in the future. Now, here's a comparison between my large stippling tool and the small stippling tool. This one is the large, this one is the small. Notice the difference in the size. There is a very, very big visible difference. This one is much more deeper, much more aggressive. And the color is a little bit darker. So 
that's the kind of difference you should be expecting. Um, I strongly advise you to get the salient one or get the small waffle pattern tool if you like a softer touch to your to your frames. Uh, basically, what that means is that the st the stippling it won't be so sharp that it actually cuts your hands. If you use the Zevtech one. I would say use this if you actually bring your Glock or bring whatever plastic thing you use to games or to for training or whatever. I strongly recommend you to use the Zevtech one. The Zevtech one produces a very, uh, a very high, a very tall stippling pattern that whenever you wear gloves, you can clearly feel this on your gloves. Um, I think this is much better for practical use. This is more for aesthetics, uh, the small tool. So um, as for price, each of these retail for twenty-five US dollars, and that is translated from two hundred uh, Hong Kong dollars. Um, if you buy the copper or aluminum versions, they are more or less the same price. Um, it's just only like a couple, of, like about forty Hong Kong dollars cheaper. Um, or sometimes, sometimes they can retail for a hundred Hong Kong dollars. I understand that my tool is a little bit more on the expensive side, but considering that it removes all some of those problems. I think it's not bad. Uh, if it's worth it or whatever, I'll leave that for you to judge. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know if you guys are interested. Um, I primarily have to build a list and then order a batch. Then build another list and order a batch. Because um, the minimum order quantity is around 100 to 200. So message me if you're interested. Um, so anyways, thank you guys for watching. Uh, please feel free to comment, like, and subscribe. Also a Facebook page that you can follow me on, in which I'll leave a link in the description box below. Peace guys, happy shooting, and thanks for watching.